folks. I'm hoping to spend the next three videos finishing up my CNC from scratch tutorials. If you remember back in part one we talked about the different kinds of cuts you can make with a CNC and in part two we went through how to draw the paths and shapes in Carbide Create that you'll use to make those cuts. In this video which is part three we're going to take a look at the different kinds of bits available for CNC. The video following this one will cover how to put these new bits into Carbide Create and how to set up the tool paths you're going to need to make the actual cuts. The final video will cover using Carbide Motion to set up the machine and actually make the cuts. But first, let's get an idea of the different kinds of bits we have available to us. These come in three basic types. First is the flat bit. This is what you're going to use for most of your cuts on CNC. It has parallel sides and a flat bottom. This is going to give you a very standard profile, cut straight down and flat on the bottom. The next up is the rounded bit. It's very similar to the flat bit in that it has the parallel sides, but it has a rounded bottom. This is used to do curves and 3D work. It's particularly good at making that kind of a rounded shape for the profile. I probably won't cover 3D work in the basic series, but I will try and go into some detail in a later video. The last bit we're going to look at is what I call the pointy bit. The pointy bits encompass things like V-bits and engraving bits. These are all bits which come to a sharp point and generally have a very defined angle of edge and cutting. They're great for things like engraving or V-carving. They're also very good for making things like miter joints. And if you've seen any of my videos on making cubes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's take a closer look at each of these three categories of bits and take a look at a couple of examples so we can see exactly what we're talking about. So your flathead bits come in a wide variety of sizes. And these are probably going to be what you use for most things. Um, you'll notice here I've got uh, an eighth inch bit. These two here are quarter inch bits. Uh, this is actually another eighth inch bit that is intended for acrylic. And they go down really, really small. This is a one millimeter bit that I use for um, PCB boards. And you can get even huge ones like this one I got from McMaster Car which is also a quarter inch bit. It just happens to be a particularly long one for getting down inside of uh, deep areas if I need to. Now, one thing I want to show you is the difference between some of these bits. For example, these two. One of these is a bit for aluminum and acrylic. That's this one. You notice when I turn it like this, you'll see that that flute comes this way, right? So. Anything that's getting cut by this is getting pulled upwards, right? And if you look at this one, even with the blue, it's a little bit more difficult to see. You'll notice that that, that flute goes a different way from this one, right? Whereas this one is scooping material up into the bit. When this one hits the material, that flute is coming down. So you're actually pushing down on the material when you're cutting it. And the reason is, this is great for wood. Because when you cut wood, wood's a fibrous thing. And if you were to push up on it and cut upwards the way this bit is cutting, you're going to break those fibers. They're going to pull upward. If you're pushing down on the material, you have the support of all the fibers that are beneath it, and you get a smoother cut. So this will create a smoother side and bottom than this will on wood. So that's why these particular bits here, these blue ones, um, Carbide is now selling as well. And these are made by a company called Amana Spectra. And they're my absolute favorite bits for woodworking. But for something like aluminum, or you'll notice even on the smaller one, this one is for plastics that those bits pull upward. And there's a good reason for that. With plastics and aluminum, if you were to push that material down into the cut the way you do with the wood bits, it would get in there and it would melt. 
and that would cause your bit to clog up and potentially break or do other terrible bad things. So you don't want that. For aluminum or for uh, plastic, you want these bits that pull up and get that material out of the way so that it doesn't melt. Now the rounded bits are a specialty in and of themselves because with this rounded profile, what you can do is you can follow the edge of something and come down and cut all of these nice rounded pieces in here and not get a stair step effect like you would with a flat bit. And that allows these to cut 3D passes on work and they're really, really useful for that. And again, they come in, you know, progressively smaller and smaller sizes. This one is still a, a rounded bit, also sometimes called a bull nose bit. And it's just for getting even more and more fine detail. But again, these are great for 3D work. Um, there's even some specialty ones, like this one is a tapered bit, but it still has that distinctive round nose you can probably just see at the edge there. So those are also good for fine detail work. Now our pointy bits, also called V-bits, um, come in all kinds of angles and sizes, and there's quite a lot of these, a lot of different kinds of these. Uh, this one is a 45, this one is a 60, and this one is a 90 degree bit. And again, these are going to cut this kind of channel like this. They're very good for V-carving, for um, creating like the little miter joints like I do for my boxes, um, even for engraving. Now these smaller ones here are more designed specifically for engraving, right? They are short, they come to a very sharp point. Um, and then there's ones like this, which is a diamond drag bit. And this one comes to a very, very fine point and is designed for etching glass, ceramics, and things like that. But it is also still, because it comes to that nice point, considered to be kind of a V-bit or an engraving bit. Now, one thing um, I haven't talked about right now is the shaft on these bits. Like you'll notice that this is a quarter inch shaft this one is an eighth inch shaft. This one looks like a quarter inch shaft, but it's actually a metric shaft. So you have to be careful when you're buying things like, you know, Amazon, eBay sometimes carry a lot of metric stuff for, you know, the people who weren't ruined by the U.S. educational system. And those will not fit in a standard quarter inch chuck. So you need to bear that in mind. You may need to get a special metric one. I have one. Um, that I keep around just because some of the bits that I get do come in the metric sizes. So definitely one thing to keep an eye out for when you're, when you're buying bits online. So by now, you're probably a bit overloaded. With so many choices, where do you start? Here is my own humble opinion. I'm going to assume for now that you're going to be working mainly in wood, as there are much better channels for information on things like aluminum. For the woodworker, I recommend starting with a quarter inch Amana Spectra, an eighth inch Amana Spectra, and a carbide V90 bit. The quarter inch bit handles most of your basic cuts and can be pushed pretty hard. For finer work and places where the quarter doesn't reach, the eighth inch bit is your go-to. Finally, for V carving, etching, and miter joints, the 90 degree V bit is really tough to beat. Trust me, as you begin to have more success, you will accumulate more bits. Also more wood, tools, sawdust, cats. This is just the beginning for you. Welcome to the rabbit hole that is CNC.